Hello there Ranger family and welcome to another Power Rangers off-season bonus video. Welcome to the reviewer kitchen as I'll probably start calling it as I have another Power Rangers toy review for you. As you can see here I have managed to pick up the Dino Charge Megazord and I thought I would review it for you guys. The Dino Charge Morpher review went pretty well and so I'm going to review this for you as well. Let's start with the packaging. We'll start here on the front. Uh, the Megazord is basically assembled, although as is the case some of the pieces are uh, down on the bottom. Uh, has the show logo right there. You get a picture of the three individual Zords down here and a picture of the Dino Charge Red Ranger here. The logo that indicates that it is Zord Builder compatible, as all of the main Megazords have been lately. Three Zords combined, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Stegosaurus, and the Triceratops. On the right side of the box here, they actually have a window that shows you the right arm. There is a really good picture of the uh, Dino Charge Megazord here. Moving over to the left side, they also have that window here, and you can see Triceratops a little more clearly, and I think that that is due to the uh, Comic-Con controversy uh, regarding the purple Triceratops Zord. Uh, it is pink. You can see both through the front of the box and through the side, and when I get it open and show you that it is pink. And here they also have, of course, uh, talking about the scanner app for the batteries, the dyno chargers, and that there are four ways to play. The app, the morpher, the toy zords, and the little uh, mini toys I mentioned in the dyno charger, dyno charge morpher review uh, that come with the power packs. Looking at the back there, there's actually a really good picture of the Dino Charge Megazord that, uh, that comes from Kyo Ryuger, but it still it looks very good. A uh, description here of how the Zords work, how you insert the uh, chargers into them. And then, of course, the Zord Builder description here that you can combine it with other Zords in the line, other toys, other motorcycles, whatever. And then the, uh, the uh, encouragement down here to collect all of the Dino Chargers. Now, unlike the Super Mega Force merchandise, there is no specific number mentioned. It just says collect them all. So uh, it's hard, kind of hard to tell how many batteries, how many chargers will be in the line. But who gets a toy to look at the box, right? Let's pop on in. Now, very interestingly, the box does not actually open from the top or the bottom. It opens from the sides. So we'll go ahead and open up the side here. As always, kids, if you are watching, ask your parents for help with this. Uh, be very careful when handling sharp objects, etc. Open it up. Pull it out. Here is a look at how it looks in the box. This is also helpful to some people who are repackaging them. Over here we have the Triceratops Zords drill tail. There's a charger here that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. Right here we have the Stegosaurus's tail. Um, and down here we have the Tyrannosaurus Zords feet. And other than that it's basically put in the box as the Megazord. All right, let's pop it out and take a look at the individual Zords, and then we're going to put it back together as the Dino Charge Megazord. One thing I'm noticing as I'm taking these out, by the way, that I am extremely grateful for is the individual parts are not secured in with any kind of binding. It, the plastic is just kind of made in a way to hold it into place, and you kind of have to tug it out. Uh, that is very much appreciated. And I take that back. Um, the Megazord itself is actually secured in with one little tie around its waist. There. Behind everything is uh, two tail pieces for the Tyrannosaurus. All right, so let's start with the charger that comes with it. Uh, as I complained about in my Dino Charge Morpher video, it is a Tyrannosaurus Rex charger. 
Uh, the way that they try to make up for it is this is a clear plastic Tyrannosaurus Rex charger. I've brought out my uh, regular Tyrannosaurus Dino Charger that comes with the Morpher, and there's actually one pro and one con for the for the clear plastic battery, besides the clear plastic, obviously. The clicking feature on the clear battery feels a lot smoother and more solid than on the standard one. Um, I mean, that might just be me, but... Um, the other main difference is that, though, on the standard Dino Charger, Tyrannosaurus Rex is printed a little more clearly. Uh, it has black outlining of the letters, whereas on the clear plastic one, Tyrannosaurus Rex seems to be just printed in red on a black block. So that looks a little lazier. Okay, now my quick little rant. I'm not going to go on as long about this as I did during the Dino Charge Morpher review, but it still needs to be said. Bandai of America, if you are watching this video, this is not enough to justify having a Tyrannosaurus Charger with this Megazord. That's not what I want. It comes with two other types of Zords that you could have included the Chargers for. After all of that controversy, it would have been nice if the Triceratops Charger was the one that was included with the Megazord. You know, I do have the itch to collect all the Dino Chargers, but I don't I don't need to have the clear plastic Tyrannosaurus Charger and the regular Tyrannosaurus Charger and the shiny Tyrannosaurus Charger and the metallic Tyrannosaurus Charger. You know, I just want one of each dinosaur. You know, make it easier for us to collect the whole set. I said that each time I got a new Dino Charger battery that I would show you guys what it does with the Dino Charge Morpher. So, brave in. It's a little harder to see on the clear plastic one, but you can see that the two pegs are in exactly the same places, so they're going to make the morpher make the same noises. Ah! Alright, this is turning out to be one of the more complicated videos I've made, but we're back on track here. Uh, I have the Megazord disassembled into its base zords, and now we can take a look at them. We'll go ahead and start with the base of the Megazord, the Tyrannosaurus Rex Zord, right here. All the Zords, of course, work with the chargers, um, and so what you do um, for the Tyrannosaurus is open the mouth, just like that. Take the battery, and you put it into the mouth here, and it just clicks in. When you push down to close the mouth, pop, little Apro pops up on him, which I think looks good. Um, this is going to sound weird, but the thing that I really like the best about the Tyrannosaurus sword is the feet. The feet are very large, which is reflective of a dinosaur. It should have very large feet. Alright, moving on to the Stegosaurus sword. One thing that you notice is that the Stegosaurus and the Triceratops are very similar, and I will uh, point out how when we get over to the Triceratops there. Um, the tail of the Stegosaurus is the primary sword, and I'll show you that functionality when we get to the Megazord. Um, to insert the Dino Charger, pull up on the top half of his head there. And when you put the Charger in, when you push it in, it's going to pop up the sword blade. The way the gimmick functions on the Stegosaurus and Triceratops swords is a slider that is underneath here. You don't even actually have to have a battery in it. You can just push down on that slider and it activates the function. Spoilers! That's basically it as far as the Stegosaurus. Moving on to the Triceratops sword. The Triceratops sword has a drill as its tail right there. The drill does not spin in any way has the horns, obviously, there. Um, 
the one thing you may notice about this is it is very pink. Very, very pink. There was a controversy when these Zords were first shown off at Comic-Con. The Triceratops Zord was purple with Bandai reps saying that they felt like a pink Zord would not sell very well to boys who are their main demographic. The adult fan base of the show went insane because we want show accuracy. We will buy the Megazord as long as it looks right. We don't want a purple Triceratops. We want a pink Triceratops. And it is very, very pink. I've even read online that it is more pink than its Japanese equivalent. So uh, they made sure that this thing was pink. Alrighty, to activate the gimmick, you pull up the same way on the top of the head there. And then you insert the charger. And by the way, you guys may have noticed this, but just to mention it, uh, I've been using the Tyrannosaurus chargers. It doesn't matter what charger you use. I obviously don't have the Stegosaurus or Triceratops chargers as of yet. Uh, so I'm just using the Tyrannosaurus chargers. Uh, you toss it in there, and it pops that tail out back. It still doesn't spin at all. Um, but it pops it back. It is Megazord time, and I recommend that you pay attention because speaking from experience, this is a bit complicated for a Megazord sequence. Once you, once you get the hang of it, it does make sense, but um, it is tricky. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the Tyrannosaurus. The first step is to remove the tail of the Tyrannosaurus, and all you have to do there is push his head forward so that the section separates just like that and then simply pull the tail piece out and set that aside for the moment and you can even slide that back in there the next step is going to seem a little weird but you have to do it you have to pull his legs apart right near the butt and the reason that you do that is to fish out his helmet yes his helmet is stored right in between his legs, he 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 he. Okay, also set that aside. You can put that back together. Um, the next step is to take the lower part that was holding the tail and bring that down with the legs. So just, you, pull, you know, pull the legs down like that and then pull the top section back up like that. Uh, this, this way. Um, the front of the Megazord, obviously, is the section that has the painted uh, details. When they've done dinosaur-based seasons, the Tyrannosaurus has always been the primary bulk of the body of the Megazord, but they've done it very creatively each time. Uh, this time, what you're going to do is you're going to take the chest piece and the legs, and you're going to turn them so that the chest piece is above the feet, facing forward, just like that and fold the two silver legs down right there and there you have most of a Megazord body just right there straight up like that so you can set him down right there take your Triceratops Zord uh, you can even activate that slider so that the, the tail pops down you're gonna open the mouth but you do not need to have a charger inside for it to attach uh, the Triceratops Zord goes on the left shoulder, and you're going to see two uh, tall pegs there, and they connect to two, the two connectors right on the shoulder, right around where the battery port is, and you just snap those in, and then you can even pull the head back down so that it kind of chomps onto that connector a little more securely. That's basically what the Zord is doing, just biting onto that shoulder. So that, oh, forgot the legs. For the legs, what you want to do is fold the little leg up first and then the big leg up second, and that's going to form a solid yellow stripe there. And then you're just going to do the same thing on the others. Little leg up first, big leg up second, form that solid stripe right there. And there you go, now it's an arm. Stegosaurus goes a touch bit different because what you're going to want to do is remove his back since that's the sword, like I said. Actually, though, it may be a little more helpful to first operate that slider and pop out that blade. So the blade pops out just like that. Set that aside. And then the same deal with the legs. Little leg up, big leg up, form the solid stripe. Little leg up, big leg up, form the silver stripe. 
open the mouth. That is going to chomp on to that side on the right arm. There you go, like that. And then they already have preformed hands on them, and the sword has a holder peg. So you slip that into the hand, and now he's got a weapon. Of course, he's got a drill tail on the other side of his other arm, so really he's got two weapons. Uh, to form the head, you just need to turn this piece um, in the middle of the Tyrannosaurus's back up. It rotates all the way around, so you know, just find where the base is facing forward. And then take the helmet, put it on there, it'll snap very nicely. And the final step, the Tyrannosaurus's tail, I'm going to take that and fold it out so it's flat. And then you're going to take the two big peg pieces and put them into the two pegs down there. That's on his back. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the Dino Charge Megazord. Let's quickly go through a disassembly sequence just to uh, reinforce putting it that way. And actually, that's really, if you're pulling this out of the box, that's where you might get confused. It comes basically assembled in the box, so really you're going to need to take it apart before you put it together. Okay, so you take out the sword piece there, fold the blade back in, just pull that stegosaurus off, close his mouth, Fold the legs down. This will be the big leg first since it's in the way. Big leg, little leg there. And then the stegosaurus back goes on there with a catch peg. You're going to see there's a yellow peg at the top, and then a catch peg, and then a hole, and there's stuff for all that right there. And it just attaches all very one, two, three. And that's it for the, that. Triceratops basically the same way. Pull it off, close the mouth. Big leg down, little leg down, big leg down, little leg down, and push the drill back in, and that's that. And now for your Tyrannosaurus, which honestly is about at least 85% of this Megazord, pull that tailpiece off the back, fold it back up, remove the helmet like that, and turn the face down so it's facing down. Fold the shoulders down if they were up, so it's one continuous piece there. Pull the silver legs out and rotate it back. So, And you're going to rotate it in the way so that his head is above his arms, because biology, right? <laughs> and then the same way as before, just opposite, you know, pull the legs forward so this tail section is down. And you're going to see that there's a big gap you're going to see there's a big gap in the lower tail section where the shoulder is going to slot right into. Before you do that, take your tail piece. You're going to see this slidey slot type thing on the top. They don't actually use that type of a connector very much, but it works. Slide it right into the top section just right next to the shoulder, and then fold that down, and that'll all connect very smoothly. Bring the legs forward. Um, and then, oh yeah, <laughs> last thing, pull his butt open, and the, you'll see how the helmet goes in because the gap is bigger on one side, and you, it just kind of stores in there, you know, it'll snap shut, and there you go. All right, I suppose it's time for a final verdict. I actually really like this Megazord. Um, I like the way it looks. Yes, it could have been better painted, but that just means Bandai of America, you know? But the parts that are painted are painted well. Uh, it's very colorful, and I know that comes from Kyo Ryuger, but uh, it's, it's very colorful. And also, the T-Rex is a very large Zord. Uh, it's probably one of the larger individual Zords we've had, at least that I know of. Um, it's much larger than the Skyship, I should say. The, the process of putting it together is actually kind of complicated, which, believe it or not, I like, because it adds this idea that forming the Megazord is something kind of, kind of complicated, kind of tricky. It's a technical process. Although I still have my registered complaint about this coming with the 
clear plastic Tyrannosaurus charger as opposed to the Triceratops charger or the Stegosaurus charger. Uh, by the way, both of those are available in the first wave of power packs. Um, and as far as I know right now, that'll probably be the only way to get them. It's very possible that one of the other chargers comes with the sword and, you know, just encouraging you to buy other things. Which I understand, you know, I understand parceling out the batteries to different items, I just don't like duplication. Um, I really would have preferred this to come, perfectly honestly, I really would have preferred it to come with the Triceratops charger, but what are you going to do? Other than that, it's, uh, it's a very good Megazord, and I consider it a worthy addition to my collection. Very important piece of information right about now as I'm posting this, um, about this Megazord. I purchased this Megazord on January 20th at Target. Now, I had done some internet research beforehand. Uh, to find out the prices, and on Target.com, I saw the Megazord listed at $19.99, but it said it was out of stock. And I figured, yeah, you know, that's a cheap price for a Megazord. They're usually around $30. So um, I figured that they had been bought out of that and that that was an online price. Um, if you search around online, there are currently um, coupons for Dino Charge toys, including $5 off of the Dino Charge Megazord. Um, they are part of the of the Dino Charge scanner app. So I searched around Valdosta looking for one of these, and I found one at Toys R Us, and it was $34.99. And I was ready to do that, and I was ready to use my coupon and get it for $30, which is about average price, but I decided, you know, let me go check Target just in case and see what happens. So I got to Target, and they did have Dino Charge Megazords, and on the shelf, they were listed as being $29.99. And I went, well, you know, I'm going to still save my $5 on that. So I went, and I took it up to the counter, and she rang it up, and it rang up $19.99. The price that is currently on their website, at least as far as January 21st, $19.99, is the accurate in-store price, no matter what you see on the shelf. If you take it up to the counter, and they, uh, and they ring it up, and it rings up at the higher price, talk to uh, the customer service, mention to them about that. They should have a way for you to look that up, and they will be able to correct that price. But for me, it rang right up at $19.99, and I was able to use my $5 off coupon, so this cost me about $17 after tax. So that is a great deal for what this is. Uh, like I said, it's a proud addition to my Megazord collection. I am glad to have it, and uh, it will be occupying a space on my shelf, which you will see as far as my next video. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this bonus edition of Power Rangers Off-Season Reviews. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Dino Charge Megazord, either from my review or if you've seen one yourself. Let me know if you're planning on getting it and uh, any other items in the toy line that you might be interested in me reviewing. Again, like I said during my Dino Charge uh, Morpher review, I'm really mainly sticking to the Morpher and the Megazord, and I might pick up some of the other Zords that attach to the Megazord and some of the Power Packs, but if I get a lot of interest, then you know, maybe I'll see what I can do as far as, uh, as far as other items in the toy line. Like the video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video by clicking that like button right down below and subscribe to the channel. I'm doing a lot of Power Rangers stuff, but I'm also a vlogger. I'm also interested in sports and video games and just all kinds of stuff. I'd like to thank you so much for watching, and until next time, may the power protect you.